My second encounter with the Jesse James gang was a little more fortunate than the first. This is what happened. Frontier Gentlemen. Here with an Englishman's account of life and death in the West. As a reporter for the London Times, he writes his colorful and unusual stories. But as a man with a gun, he lives and becomes a part of the violent years in the new territories. In just a moment, we will bring you the latest report from the Frontier Gentlemen. Keeping one ear to the ground may offer fine possibilities for calisthenics. But when it comes to keeping up with world affairs, you'll find CBS News much more reliable, much more convenient, too. Regularly scheduled CBS News programs, like those featuring Walter Cronkite and Wells Church, come to you on most of these same stations throughout the week. They keep you right up to the minute with history, with concise, informative reports. Now, starring John Daner, this is the story of J.B. Kendall, Frontier Gentleman. Thaddeus Clark was a miner returning to Illinois from the western Wyoming gold mining country. He and I shared a common bond. We had both been held up by Jesse James and his companions outside of Laramie. But Clark had been relieved of some $5,000 in gold dust, whereas my loss, although leaving me stony broke, amounted to a matter of only $20. In all friendliness and goodwill, Clark offered to pay for my ticket to Cheyenne, where I was sure my remittance from England would be waiting I accepted the loan, and the two of us boarded the train. As we waited in the station for our departure, I commented to the conductor on the fact that except for us, the carriage was empty. Yeah, these days, folks is moving west. Not many coming back. You should have seen us last trip out to Salt Lake. Biggest crowd in the year. Any particular reason for that? No, just like a plague of locusts. No telling why. Same with Eastern folks. Seems they all decided once to pull up stakes and head out this way. Of course, there'll be more getting on in Cheyenne. How soon will we be pulling out, mister? Mm, about two minutes. Driving Cheyenne, barn Buffalo, Indians, and bad men at 4.30. Buffalo and Indians is all right. We've had enough of bad men. That's so. Trouble, huh? Well, we had the dubious honor of being held up by Jesse James. You don't say. <laughs> well, now, Jesse James. I'd given something to seeing him. We did. Well, sir, proud to have met you boys. Have a good trip. Jesse James. <laughs> He's impressed. He can afford to be. Now, what do you plan to do now? Do you still go back to Illinois? Yeah, I haven't made up my mind. Got enough to last for a while. Mm. Then maybe I'll go on back to the Sweetwater country after I spend a little while in Cheyenne. Mm. Pan gold again? Yeah. Unless I'm lucky enough to hit a vein. How about you? Oh, I'm not sure. I've been thinking about working my way through Dakota Territory. Then perhaps down to Kansas. I'd like to see Dodge City. Well... Can't say I'll be sorry to see the last of Lara. <laughs> I can't exactly blame you. Hey! Mm. Oh. Coming out of the waiting room. Those two men. Both men were well-dressed and carried no luggage. They ran toward the train and then disappeared from view. But I'd had enough time to recognize at least one of them. It was Jesse James' companion, the one we knew only as C.D. They got on. I swear they did. Did you see him, C.D., did you? Yes. You think the other fellow's one of the gang? I never saw him without a mask, but I'd be willing to bet on it. Uh, keep your head down. <laughs> Pretend to be asleep. I'll read the newspaper. Thanks. Right. Oh, I swear, 
CD. I don't know how you do it. <laughs> you just don't know how. Let's get him. No, not yet. Keep your head down. If they look back there. Can you see? What are they doing? They just sat down. Up at the front. I get my hands on that sneaking lowdown. And the question is, are the others on the train, too? You mean James? No. He might have gone further back. We didn't see him. My 5,000. If they've still got it, you might get it back. <laughs> What's going on now? Ah, uh, they've got a bottle. Taking a drink. All right. I think now's as good a time as any. Get out your gun. You sure it's loaded? Yep. We'll walk up there, quietly. We'll sit down behind them. If they see us before we get there, drop to the floor and start shooting. Don't worry. Come on, then. Listening to Arthur Godfrey time five days a week is a virtue that comes with a built-in reward. Arthur and the gang have just one thought in mind, to bring you entertainment. Since their songs and comedy do just that, you do yourself a favor every time you tune them in. Every weekday, join us on most of these same stations for Arthur Godfrey time. Two men who had robbed us, members of Jesse James' gang, occupied seats at the front of the carriage. Clark and I moved up the aisle toward them, the carriage rocking and swaying as we rounded the bend. We sat down behind them. <laughs> now, listen, I tell you, I've seen it. I've seen it myself, Billy. This fella, he's only got one eye, and, and Frank, he don't like the way the card is going. Yeah. Well, he figures the one-eyed gent is doing some fancy dealing. <laughs> So he skins his gun out. You seen Frank draw? I sure have seen him draw. Well, he lays it on the table in front of him, and he says, "Well, boys, we're gonna have fresh deal." Fellas in the game, they take one look at Frank's face. Yeah. This one, they say, "All right, Frank, sure, sure, anything you say." <laughs> Frank says, "All right, now we got that settled." And you know what he's doing all this time? <laughs> he, he's tapping on that gun, laying there. Well, he's talking, and he says, Now we got that settled, I'm saying right now, that from here on there ain't going to be nothing but square deal. I ain't making no accusations, nothing like that. But I'll tell you, if I catch any son of a gun cheating again, I'm going to shoot his other eye out. <laughs> Very good. Good story. But don't turn around, gentlemen. Just put your hands up. All the way. Hey. You don't I know you? Recognize the voice, huh? Kendall? And Clark, where's my gold? All in good time. Better search them first. If they try anything while I'm doing it, Clark, shoot CD in the back of the neck. Right here. Oh! No, uh, Just so. Well, an unexpected pleasure, C.D. I don't think I've met your companion. Billy. Billy Badger. All right, Billy. Keep those arms stretched nice and high. Mm. Quite an arsenal. And it does for you. Now, C.D., very carefully... Get up and come out into the aisle. Can you hold these, Clark. Mm, two more. Ah, yeah, that's better. What about the gold? Yeah, yes, I was coming to that. Sit down, CD. Now. What about Mr. Clark's gold? We ain't got it. Oh? Who has? 
Jesse? And where is Jesse? We don't know. Do we, Billy? No. That's a fact. We split up. Did you? And where did Mr. James go? I told you. We don't know. Oh, yeah, so you did. Which makes it rather awkward for you two gentlemen. Hey, now, now are you going to kill now, us? Look, you, you can't do that. Without the money you stole, you're not much use to Now, us. just w- wait a minute here. Hold on. I, I, I've got some. Here. Maybe 200 in gold. There's another 50 in paper. I got about the same. Hand it over. Sir, that leaves about 4,500 you owe us. Well, now, now listen, we can give it Shut to up, you. Billy. But... You were saying? Nothing. Oh, all he meant was that well, when we get to Cheyenne, maybe we we'll raise the money there for you. Is that what he meant? Yeah. Yeah, that's right. They're lying, Kendall. I agree. No, we ain't lying on it. We sure ain't. You want first shot, Clark? Sure. Uh, not in the stomach, though. They they make so much noise. Now, now, now that downright murder. murder. Give us Look a chance. Kid, Stand anything. up in the aisle, boys. We don't want to get blood all over the seats. Wait now, look. Wait a minute. You can get your money. Shut up, Billy. But just I... shut up. Kendall, I'll bet you five bucks you can't take off in here at five paces. Who's? Either one. I'll take Billy. You better bet. Uh, which ear, right or left? Um... Left. Mm-hmm. Left. And move over, CD. Billy, back up to the door. Well, now, look, fellas. Uh, you've got nothing to worry about, Billy. He's bluffing. Back up. But he's bluffing, Billy. How do you know? Ain't your ear. Yeah, that's far enough, Billy. Ready? You ain't got the guts, Kim. Don't worry, Billy. He ain't got the guts. <laughs> oh. Missed. That's five, you owe me. Same bet. You try it. All right. No. No, I'll tell you. You shut up, Billy. You shut up. I ain't shooting at you. Frank Stack. In the next carriage back. He's carrying them gold sacks we took off. Anybody else with him? No. Where's no, he's James? Alone. Where is James? Well, we're meeting him up ahead. Good. Now sit down again, both of you. Clark, I'll get Stack. You keep an eye on these fellows. What's he wearing, Billy? Oh, regular black sack coat, vest, bowler hat. He, he's about your height. Wouldn't you figure, C.D.? Yeah, I guess. Fine. If they give you any trouble, Clark... Well, we won't give no trouble, honey. I moved back through the carriage and out onto the open platform. Climbed over the railing into the next coach. I looked for the conductor, but he was nowhere in sight. Then I spotted the man who answered the description of Frank Stack. He was sitting alone, but I felt uneasy when I saw that the seats both behind and in front of him were occupied. Keeping my gun hidden underneath my jacket, I quickly moved down the aisle and sat down next to Stack. Find another place, mister, right on... This is a gun, Stack. See... Now, we don't want any of the people in here to be hurt, do we? Hey, you're the fellow that That's was right. The one you held up near Laren. Pick up your bag and walk ahead of me. Hey, now, listen, don't I talk, don't have... Just do as you're told. Yeah. Yeah, all right. Uh, don't, don't get itchy. We're going to join your friends up in the next coach. Walk slowly. Behave yourself. And you may live until we reach Cheyenne. Yeah, yeah, yeah sure. That ain't gonna prove nothing. Climb over the railing. Well, that's dangerous. Man could get killed between the coaches. Man could get killed standing here unless he stopped arguing. I'll hold the bag. No, no, you don't have to. Oh, yes, I do. Thank you. Off you go. And open the door and go in. I thought you said... 
There ain't nobody in here. Clark! Clark! Keeping Stack in front of me, I walked the length of the empty car. Then, where Clark had been sitting, I found him. The miner was sprawled out on the coach floor, wedged between seats. An ugly cut on his head, a trickle of blood running from it. Get more for the money you spend. Earn more on the money you save by making use of the practical information that comes your way on the business news. Throughout the week on CBS Radio, our business news brings you Walter Cronkite or Bill Downs with an up-to-the-minute report on price trends, marketing conditions, and everything else of a business nature that's likely to interest you. Join us on most of these same CBS radio stations when it's time for the next edition of the Business News. I had a pretty good idea of where the other two road agents had gone. In front of our carriage was the mail and baggage car. I disarmed Stack, then forced him to lie face down on the floor while I tried to help Clark. It took about ten minutes for him to recover consciousness. Clark. Uh, Say, Clark. Uh, Clark. Oh. Whew, I, I thought I was dead. Clark, what happened? Well, we, we hit a, a rough bit of rail on a cur- curve. It threw me off balance. And the next thing I knew, that CD was all over me. He, he got one of the guns we left lying on the seat. That's what happened. Ooh. Uh, here, this might make you feel better. Open up the bag. Hey, what's he doing down there? You have to shoot him? No, he's just behaving himself. Hey, hey, my gold. Let's see, seven. Wait a minute, there's, there's only seven. Where's the other three sacks? You better ask him. Where's the rest of my gold, mister? Get up, Stack. Where is it? Jesse lost it in a poker game last night back in Laramie. He did, huh? Where are you supposed to meet James? Hmm? No, don't worry. You'll tell me. Clark, go and find the conductor. Tell him the other two are in the baggage car. Right. Now, here, take his gun with you. Now, Mr. Stack, I'm only going to ask you once more. Where are you meeting James? More? No, no, no. You're waiting to kill Crick Bridge. Ah, so that's the game. Train hold up this time, huh? How many with him? Just one. Uh, what's the plan? If you flag on the train this side of the bridge, CD, Billy Badger, and me will clean out the baggage car and wait for the westbound out of Cheyenne. As soon as it crosses Dale Creek Bridge, we blow up the trestle and empty out their baggage car. I see. Single track, two trains facing each other, bridge down. The only way to go is Laramie. You fellas hightail it for the east, right? Yeah. Hmm. Effective. By the time they're able to get to Laramie and telegraph the news to Cheyenne, I imagine you'll be well on your way to Dakota Territory. Well, we'll have to try to do something about this, won't we? He didn't answer. Just stood there, glaring at me. A minute or so later, Clark came back, followed by the conductor. I told them what was in store for us. The first thing we did was to bind Stack securely and place him under the guard of one of the other passengers. Then we had to work out the best plan of procedure. I don't know. Dale Creek Bridge ain't so far off. Maybe five minutes, probably less. We're making pretty fair time. Is there any way of getting into the baggage car besides through the door? No, sir. I got no key. Mail clerk must have opened it for them. Side door is sealed, too. Only way to get in is to blow it in. No, no. If you ask me, we'll keep right on going. Right or into Cheyenne. Then we can let the marshal get him out. It's a good idea, except for one thing. If James has already got the charge laid to the bridge, and we don't stop on signal... He might blow it up. 
Not with his own boys aboard. Well, I shouldn't like to risk the lives of your passengers on the supposition that James has a tender heart. How much gold are you carrying in the baggage car? Hundred thousand? Mister, from what I've seen of Jesse James, for a hundred thousand in gold, he'd set fire to his own mother. He won't give two hoots and a holler about the rest of his gang. Yeah, yeah. Now, if they don't suspect that anything is wrong, when they signal you to stop, you stop. Well, there's only two of them. I want to avoid the possibility of one meeting the train and the other waiting to set up the charge. Once we can get them both in sight, we can shoot it out. Makes good sense to me. I'll go up and tell the engineer. No, you, you warn the passengers. Tell them not to panic. I'll talk to the engineer. You'll have to go over the top of the baggage car. I'll manage. Well, we better get a move on. We haven't much time. But it took longer than I thought it would to convince a highly suspicious engineer so that by the time he agreed to stop the train, if so ordered, we were only a scant minute from Dale Creek. I remembered the trestle from another trip I had taken a few weeks before. It was more than 130 feet high, spanning a chasm between six and 700 feet in width. The thought of a charge blowing up as we were crossing was not pleasant. I left the engine cab and had just reached the platform standing between the baggage car and the coach when there was a scream of brakes. See anything? Ah, uh, not yet. Yes, there's one. He's on horse, standing by the engine. I can't see who it is. Nobody on this side. Well, unless they're going to blow up the side of the car, James is either going to have to get in through here, or C.D. and Badger will have to come out. Maybe they're waiting for one of the boys to get off. You figure there's some kind of signal we don't know about? No, no, no. Wait a minute. There's another. Both of them now. Come over here. Yeah, that's James on the black horse, see? Yeah. You keep back. Kendall, look out! Jesse! Jesse, it's a trap! Look out, Jesse! Come on, Jesse, let's get out of here! Ah, give me your gun, Clark! But it was too late. Jesse James and his companion were gone. When we reached Cheyenne, Frank Stack and the bodies of C.D. and Billy Badger were turned over to the marshal. Thad Clark recovered all but $750 of his fortune, and I, my $20. As well as being able to boast that I had fired at and missed the notorious Jesse James. Frontier Gentlemen was written, produced, and directed by Anthony Ellis and stars John Daner as J.B. Kendall. Featured in the cast were Harry Bartell as Clark, Stacey Harris as C.D., Charles Seal as the conductor, and Vic Perrin as Billy Badger. Join us again next week for another report from the Frontier Gentleman, Bud Sewell speaking.